you own a house, but you've never sold one. This is going to be a video about the common mistakes. There's three that we'll point out that first time sellers make all the time. And usually it costs them a lot of money. So at the time to sell, when you're a first time seller, you always feel really excited. You feel like, oh my God, my house, my house is worth so much money. This is gonna be so easy. Let's just put it on the market. But there's a lot of preparation that should be involved to do this right. So again, the three common mistakes, let's get into them right now. The temptation is there, I totally understand. You don't wanna spend any money. You don't wanna take the time to get repairs. Maybe it's tough to get a contractor in your area. I know it is here sometimes too, but it is so worth it. So we're gonna run through a couple items you might wanna check out in your home if you're thinking about getting it sold soon. So think of it this way. Have you ever went to a hotel and you went in and uh, the walls were kind of uh, needed, they're a little gross, right? Carpet was old. You feel a certain type of way about that hotel and you may go back to the front desk and ask for another room. You may even ask the manager for a discount on your stay. And it's true, okay? If the carpet's dirty, yes, maybe somebody can put their own carpet in afterward, but you can't take back what you've already seen. So the largest surface areas in the house, what the eyes are drawn to are gonna be the walls, they're gonna be the floors, they're gonna be the countertops. And if those areas have blemishes and you sell as is, it's gonna feel like a worn property. And with a worn property, just like the hotel room, the person is gonna expect a discount. Now, the market is fantastic right now, so yes, there are people that are gonna overlook that, right? But the thing is, is if you are wanting to make top dollar, it is a mistake to not consider, you know, correcting these items. So bottom line, don't make the mistake of trying to sell your home as is. Invest a little bit of time and energy, if not money, at least go into your backyard and your front yard, spruce those things up, do everything you can to make that first impression as good as it can be. Because that's what gives these people the feeling that they might wanna choose your home over another one. And a lot of the times it's not really the money, like Jessica's saying. A lot of the times, if you don't have the money, it's totally fine. Um, but to, to just spend the time cleaning and to spend the time doing a little touch-up paint and everything like that, things that don't cost a lot of money is really wise. So we once had a property where just this happened, right? It was touch up the walls, uh, clean the carpets. It was all pretty much labor intensive. And the difference between this property and another property in the neighborhood that was turnkey, it was just that. And so we could directly measure exactly the results of this. And the difference was about $20,000 in profit for the seller. And what this took was literally 20 hours worth of work. So we tell people you're gonna invest a little bit of time. It's really wise to invest that 20 hours because you made $20,000. So I don't know about you, but $1,000 an hour is probably worth putting in that time because- That's a huge payout. Most people don't even make that at their jobs. <laughs> so mistake number two that we see all the time for first time sellers is trying to time it a little too quickly, or in other words, rushing, rushing the process. So they're either trying to rush the home onto market and not paying attention to the details that need to fall into place in order to get it on the market in the correct way, or they get really, really excited and rush into the first offer they receive and don't give it enough time on the market to show it to all the people that might not have been available the first couple of days. There could be more people that want to see the home if you leave it on just a little bit longer. So when you're selling the house, it's, it's usually tied to an event. Okay, you're leaving town, um, you're starting a new job in that other town, the timeline kind of gets defined, you feel a little pressure. And so everybody think, thinks that, all right, I'm kind of ready, let's put the house on the market. And like Jessica's saying, if it is not fully ready, you are better off waiting a week because what the cost of that is gonna be is way higher than waiting an extra week to close on the property. So we see it a lot. We'll go out, we'll meet a seller, we'll get together a list. A lot of the times we're helping the seller out with some contractors and whatnot. Uh, we had a property where there, 
uh, they needed to, it was on, a, on land and there was a lot of mud and, and they needed to dump some gravel to make it all clean, accessible, not look like a mud bog in the backyard. And they wanted to rush the property to market just because the rest of it was ready, right? So let's go, baby, right? Um, it would have been the wrong move because that person who come out to look at the property is not gonna wanna traipse through the mud. Um, it's a very easy to solve problem. So at that point, we just push the process out one week and that's what we would recommend. So rushing the property as it relates to getting it on the market, but also rushing that offer review process as well. So a lot of the times they'll get the first offer, they're super excited, oh my gosh, it's full price or it's above asking. And I can tell you that most of the time, if you let that listing season and you run a playbook for negotiations, a lot of the times the difference in the return between accepting the offer on day one versus accepting the offer on day, a different offer on day four or five, um, can be thousands upon thousands of dollars. So don't rush the process. So last one, but no less important. This is a huge mistake that I see people make all the time in real estate, especially when they're going to sell their home. They don't understand all the financials that are involved. This is a huge investment. It's most likely your most expensive investment that you have. You should really understand your financials. So what we really mean by that is you're gonna sell your home, you're gonna take a certain amount of lump sum of money somewhere else. You're either gonna put it in your savings or you're gonna put it towards the next house or you're gonna do some combination of the two. So a lot of people don't understand what that number looks like. They're really guessing the whole time. And so therefore, if they're trying to buy a home in a different state, maybe they're relocating and they don't know what they're down payment looks like and they're guessing, it really affects the situation of where they're going and what they're gonna spend because sometimes they're kind of doing both simultaneously. If you have a house that's, let's just throw out a number, 550,000, what could it sell for at its max and what would it sell for uh, at its worst, essentially? Like what's the lowest number? And then understanding all the fees associated with selling, understanding when you subtract that and pay off the mortgage, what are you gonna end up with? We have a lot of people that will enter the process and we'll help them understand that, but this happens a lot because we're not helping everybody out there and they don't really, they're flying blind essentially on the financials and that's a huge mistake. So if you're thinking about selling a home for the first time, make sure you know your financials, you don't rush through the process and you take that time to do the repairs, spend a little money, don't sell your home as is because that could be a huge mistake. Yeah, we see people put as is on the listing all the time as realtors. And what do you think about that? Place? Like, uh oh, <laughs> this is going to suck. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, there's definitely stuff wrong with this house. And sometimes it's not. It's just literally cosmetics. So don't make any of those three mistakes, please. And if you need a little more help, uh, be sure to check out our video, uh, The Seller's Blueprint. It's the eight steps to selling your home. And I believe these tips will help you in any marketplace, but if you're in the Olympia JVLM area, uh, also check out our last market update just to get some information on what's actually happening right now.